Folks, hello and welcome back to the Nareen Agarwal show. I have with me today. Oh my God. Okay. This is somebody I have learned from. He has been my business coach. If you're interested in entrepreneurship, startups, if you've ever thought about running your own business, this is the podcast you must listen to. We have one of India's leading business coaches and someone who's not just restricted themselves to India. Rajiv Talreja has clients from Sri Lanka, Southeast Asia, other countries. He's international, taking India's name further. He's the author of international bestseller, Lead or Bleed, welcoming Rajiv. Rajiv, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Naren. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's an absolute pleasure to be on the show with you. So I'm really looking forward to this. Rajiv, also, um, I want to bring to people's notice that you're somebody who's taking business coaching to a whole other level and you are representing India in Southeast Asian countries. I mean, in Singapore, or sorry, in Kuala Lumpur, uh, you were alongside Uncle G, which is Grand Cardone and Gary V selling, um, you know, and being present there in that experience and taking India's name in, in the midst of such people. How was that experience and what was that like? Well, I, I would say that, um, of course, it was a very proud feeling to share the stage alongside Gary Vaynerchuk, someone who I really admire. Grand Cardone needs no introduction. Uh, so I think it's a feeling of gratitude because uh, for the first uh, 10 years of my entrepreneurship journey, when I was building my corporate training company, uh, I used to go out there and sell leadership programs and sales programs to large corporate organizations. And copper training in India is considered as a cheap commodity because in every street, you have five trainers yeah. and corporate HR managers and training managers operate at such low budgets uh, that it's almost an insult on how trainers get paid in the country. So for the first 10 years after your confidence has been beaten and bruised uh, by large corporate organizations where they demand you to do a leadership program for 20,000 rupees a day, 30,000 rupees a day, where they put their entire leadership team in. Uh, <laughs> From there to then be able to evolve your own business model and then be able to impact so many lives so that a platform like sharing the stage with Grant Cardone and Gary Vaynerchuk opens up for you. I think that just fills my heart with gratitude because um, if someone asked me probably five years prior to that, that do you see yourself on international stages with Gary V and Grant Cardone? My first response would be, who are they? My second response would be, no chance. Uh, just even so five yeah. years ago. Yeah, just 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 five years prior to this experience, if somebody would have asked me this question, I would have laughed in disbelief. Wow. Um, Rajiv, I want to ask you about your story a little bit more uh, mm -hmm. because you have achieved great success and you're going on fire speed. But what does it take to become who you are today, uh, to become the business coach that people look up to, to become somebody that uh, so many people want to model? Um, what was that like? And was business coaching easy? Did you just come up with the idea? Did you just go at it, start business coaching? Well, I think I've had two phases uh, in my professional journey where I have looked at business coaching. So my journey started back in 2005, where with a bunch of friends, I uh, was on the core team of a youth organization that used to conduct training programs for college students on their career and relationships. That's how I got introduced to the world of training and development. And um, as a team, as the core team of that youth organization, within one and a half years, we scaled up that youth organization to 5,000 students being impacted through our training and coaching programs. So that's how my journey in training and coaching began. At that time, it was more as a college student. So I was pursuing my BCom back then. As a college student, along with my friends, I was building this youth organization. When the final year of college came and I had to make a career decision, um, that's the point, uh, a conversation with my father changed the course of my life. I was looking at a comfortable corporate job because I had the great Indian career plan of right from campus, get recruited and then work for two years and then prepare for uh, the CAT exam and then get into a B school. And then after the B school, get a job in the US, earn money in dollars. And at the age of 40, uh, watch the movie Swadesh 20 times, feel patriotic, quit your job, come back to India and become an entrepreneur. <laughs> so that was the thought process I had. Uh, <laughs> and I remember a conversation with my dad when I got an offer letter from a large corporate. 
he tore the offer letter and he looked at me in the eye and he he said something that i don't know if i have the permission to say on the <laughs> show but uh, he used a very empowering word in hindi which starts with chu and <laughs> he said uh, naukri karega pagal hai uh, he's and this was in an era where parents would take pride in their children b- take getting a job exactly in 2005 2006 today startups is a good replacement when you don't get a job yeah. right so <laughs> uh this was in that era where he looked at me and said you got to do something of your own you won't start your own biz- uh, you, uh, you won't take up a job you need to start your own business and when i looked at my own capabilities back then the only thing i had done was training and coaching uh but i had done that with college students so i said okay let me start a corporate training company and uh without any thought process in 2006 when i came up with the idea of quantum leap as a corporate training company back then i did not even know what coaching meant i just knew training and uh, i started going for sales meetings i remember i was in my final year of college and from september 2006 i graduated in march april 2007 but from september 2006 to march april 2007 i used to go for sales meetings uh, so i used to make calls i used to buy corporate databases make calls to yeah. training and hr managers i used to set up appointments only for a friday so that i could bunk college on friday and from morning to evening do at least four to five sales meetings wow um, and um, it took me 102 rejections before i cracked my first client wow and typically in every sales meeting what used to happen was people used to look at my baby face i didn't even have proper facial hair back then and they would be like you're too young uh, how can you don't have any corporate experience yourself how can you say that you can train and i used to flaunt my certification saying i'm an nlp certified practitioner and i have done trainings for students i've done programs of 1000 students 2000 students so i can do this but people were nobody was willing to trust a 20 year old and fairly so wow. because they were like you're a kid i mean you don't know what it takes to work in an organization and i used to say no i've led an organization which has 5000 interns so i can definitely do this i had 102 rejections before i cracked my first client in may 2007 and uh, this is what i told the client i said don't pay me any money give me a team give me a goal that they need to achieve and i will not just do a one day two day training i will hand hold them i'll come here every week i'll help them uh, make sure that they have clear goals they are aligned to their goals train them on what were skills and capabilities that are required facilitate any kind of conflicts between the team uh, resolve them uh, resolve those conflicts and and let me do this i didn't know this was called coaching wow and uh, this person looked at me and said you are making a very bold offer because i said don't pay me pay me only if uh, your team achieves the goal yeah so that's how my journey started i got this project with a company called canadian aviation electronics which is a simulation software company existing in 19 countries and the ceo at the managing director back then prasad choragudi took a bet on me and at the end of 3 months of coaching the top management I received a letter from this company saying that their revenues have gone up by 27% in 3 months time their schedule compliance on project has improved by 23% they did a third party assessment from a company called Hewitt uh, to co- evaluate the communication uh, effectiveness between the top management and they said that the communication effectiveness has grown by 30% within 3 months time because of the facilitation that is happening back then when i received this letter from them i did not even know that this was called a testimonial letter so <laughs> i started my journey as an entrepreneur with absolute ignorance the only thing that i did right was i did not stop when i was facing rejections and i always looked at asking myself how can i add value and that's when i came up with this idea of results based coaching for the next couple of years i did a lot of results based coaching product, projects with manufacturing companies it companies uh design and construction companies but in those two years i realized that i was the limitation of the business i was the one who was selling training coaching doing everything and i had a team that was by the side just watching me do and clapping hands for me and saying i'm a superhero and i realized i probably kept these people around me because i need somebody to tell me i'm a superhero uh, <laughs> and that happens with so many entrepreneurs actually absolutely i've seen entrepreneurs do everything in their business and the only thing their team is doing is clapping by the side and saying sir you are too good sir and the entrepreneur <laughs> feels really good about it 
right so i had that experience and that's when i said hey listen expecting this team to coach the way i coach to carry the business acumen that that probably i i don't know where i got it from i i always say i probably got it from my dad he's been an entrepreneur right so expecting my team to have that business acumen and then the capabilities um i thought it was a time taking process so i pivoted and we started doing corporate training so we stopped selling coaching we started selling training programs to corporates where all these large corporate organizations have annual training calendars where they want leadership training communications training time right. management prioritization work life balance they have a whole list conflict resolution so we started selling those training programs and the team of trainers used to go and deliver those trainings i used to do the senior level programs so coaching came to a pause uh, after a couple of years 2008 2009 we stopped taking up coaching projects and we started focusing on corporate training itself uh but again uh corporate training is one profession where one can get their character really assassinated uh because uh, most companies look at training as a checklist yeah. okay are, we've done five communication programs we've do three leadership programs we'll do team development programs exactly and i used to always it used to kind of hurt my pinch my conscience saying that i want to know what happens after the training i want to be there in the journey to help people implement that skill and then measure the performance of that person i want to do i felt that was more meaningful work where you are with people in the journey somehow many large corporates don't look at it that way they just look at it as a checklist item like a hygiene factor humne training karwa diya and most participants come because that day when you are attending a training you get to skip work and you get different lunch from the rest of the employees at the workplace so i used to find this very very meaningless and irritating um and at the same time financially it was not satisfying at all correct uh, because yeah people would pull out another trainer's proposal and say that person's willing to do trainings for 10000 rupees per day i'm like that person sitting at home and this is all he does he's a freelancer you can't compare a freelancer with a corporate training company yeah. i have a team i pay salaries i i have fixed overheads i'm a i'm a training company and there's a quality we come with there's content we come with a freelancer just downloads stuff off the internet one day before the program and he makes a powerpoint and there's no power <laughs> in their point and you are excited <laughs> by that so i used to always have this conflict i think it was in 2016 where we decided to go back to our roots and we said hey you know what we want to work with people who are hungry for learning hmm. we want to work with people who want to improve their results improve their lives and that's where we went back to business coaching but this time we went back to small and medium businesses for the first two years i used to focus on large corporate organizations for coaching assignments hmm. so we went back to small and medium businesses and yeah the rest is history uh we worked with thousands tens of thousands of entrepreneurs now and we have a community of more than 1500 entrepreneurs who we coach on a one to one basis today like it's one to one coaching it's not a one size fits all but where we help them scale up their business through a six month to a two year engagement with them where a coach from our team hand holds them helps them build strategies help them build systems help them develop their own skills so that they can build a scalable profitable business so that's been the journey of business coaching wow that's amazing so for a lot of people listening this might be a question that do i need business coaching you know uh, typically when you're an entrepreneur you think oh like this may be a family business my father can teach me better and a lot of people are in that mindset that how can someone else teach me business this is not physics or math so what do you say to such people well firstly uh, one needs to understand what can a coach do okay uh i believe every human who cares about accelerating their growth needs a coach and i'm going to choose my words carefully here can a business owner grow without a coach yes they can absolutely they can if they have the right mindset the 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 acumen to process their failures in the right way uh, the understanding of their target customer and the expertise in their product or service absolutely nobody can stop a person from growing their business where does a coach come a coach comes in accelerating that growth so what you would do by yourself uh probably in 5 years with a coach you can do that in 2 years okay why because what is the role of a coach firstly the coach helps you create clear goals 
many entrepreneurs create goals at the beginning of the financial year and by the first or second quarter they've lost connection to that goal because they're busy firefighting right so, so the job of a coach is to help you create clear goals is to help you stay focused on your vision whether we like it or not life takes over for everyone hmm. and when life takes over the easiest thing to do is get disconnected from the goals and just get busy with what's immediate what's urgent but the coach helps you play helps you uh, helps being a mirror to you and help you reflect on your existing actions and how are they aligning towards your goals hmm. so a coach helps you create clear goals a, help, a coach helps you stay focused a coach helps you develop new skills and knowledge hmm things that you may not know and while the coach equips you with new skills and knowledge and you implement those new skills and knowledge you will face new challenges so a coach helps you see through those challenges as well see i know a lot of people who go and attend training programs to gain knowledge i always say training is the start point because in a training program you can gain concepts you can mm-hmm. gain knowledge but when you come out of the training program and let's just say you don't let life take over and you still like implement whatever you have learned you are, you have a great action quotient when you implement something new you will face new challenges and i've seen a lot of people when they f- implement something new that they learned and they face new challenges because they did not have a coach to fall back upon they get scared of that new challenge and say no 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 what i was doing before is fine this thing is creating complications let me not do it so they go back to the old way so if you have a coach a coach supports you through those challenges and finally because you see through those challenges because you analyze and correct not retract because you continue to taking action in that new strategy in that new method and the coach is by your side helping you modify helping you adapt helping you improvise Hmm. that's when you reach a stage of mastery and you start producing new level of results wow it's so it's a journey and look very few people understand what is coaching and i i don't blame them for it because today every person who's unemployed is calling themselves a coach <laughs> i always say this that coaching is the uh LIC agent of 1990s you know in 1990s if a person lost their job or lost their business you ask them what are you doing they would say i work for LIC <laughs> today coaching is that today people don't even know what is the meaning of a coach and they say i'm a property coach prosperity coach wealth coach business coach life coach yeah. it's become an abuse of sorts which is fine right i mean each one to their own but i think it's also important to educate people on who is a coach a coach never does one to many work a trainer does one to many a coach always does one to one coaching is one to one it's never one to many right and that's where for me what's been important through this journey is while we have training programs where thousands of people come in what we've also done is built an army of coaches who will work one to one and well because they work one to one it will be premium okay and it is premium because you can expect that kind of results through coaching wow so that that's why anybody who wants to accelerate their growth needs to look at a coach that's, that's amazing and, yeah. and and you say it's in, um, like in any area that you want to accelerate so for people who want to accelerate in health they need a coach there for people who want to accelerate maybe in spiritual progress maybe you need a coach or a guide to get you through meditations or prayers etc so that makes so much sense that coaching has to be looked at different and i'm i'm glad you differentiate from training yeah uh, what i also loved about what you said was a lot of people have these books they have so much knowledge and the problem is that they have so much knowledge they don't take any action uh, this, i call the, that i call that knowledge cholesterol <laughs> knowledge cholesterol <laughs> yeah, it, it's unnecessary intellectual fat that no, people no. are putting on by going on reading going on attending seminars and trainings it's yeah. not about knowledge cholesterol it's not about developing intellectual fat you need to take action you need to implement it fail correct and then mastery comes wow i love that yeah for for most people their shelf help is like uh, their self help is shelf help it's just yeah. on the shelf never doing anything about it um and that's amazing that a coach can help you implement rajiv since you're a business coach i want to ask you this is entrepreneurship for everybody um 
because i see this you know this thing on social media now that leave your job be an entrepreneur you know it's kind of a thing now a new fad uh, and it's been like you know uh, you don't need a job you know you can quit um, everybody so, to be an entrepreneur yeah i tell you i was reading a research paper by some doctors and uh, this is what i understood and this is proven by research you know a lot of adults um, there are sometimes you have people who are perpetually unhappy and they don't know why they are unhappy even though externally everything is great in their life they have the best career or the business or the job they have a great family they have the money they have the health but they are somewhere something's like missing and research has shown that when they traced back to the first thought of the parents when the parents knew that they got pregnant research has shown that a lot of these people the first thought of their parents was of regret of having the baby okay the first thought was of fear or oh my god i didn't want this but it happened and because that was the first thought that thought is called the point of inception the point of inception of the child was feel the child in the womb that essence that embryo felt rejected and they carried it on as an adult i want to use the same analogy when people think of entrepreneurship what is the point of inception what was that first thought you had about why you want to start your business if you want to start your business because you want to be your own boss i'll tell you that sucks because it only means that your existing boss is pathetic and you want to start a business only because you don't want a person like that in your life if you want to start a business because you think oh i'll make a lot of money okay again that point of inception is flawed because every entrepreneur will tell you for the first couple of years you don't make any money if you want to start a business because your inception is i want to have free time any entrepreneur will tell you that the more your business grows the more your time goes it's no longer yours okay if you want to th- start a business because you're giving into this narrative that has been created by motivational gurus and authors and trainers and speakers saying jobs is a rat race entrepreneurship is living your own dreams then you are screwed my friend because if you think jobs are the rat race then entrepreneurship is a termite fight because what <laughs> most entrepreneurs get squished like termites and never make money yes so the point of inception of why you want to start a business is very important entrepreneurship is not about being your own boss making money having free time uh it's not about the title or the tag of that i am an entrepreneur it's not about that hmm. i think the right space for a person to pursue the journey of entrepreneurship is this hmm. one if you are young and your family's livelihood does not depend on you instead of wasting your time in post graduation education start a business start a business to fail and be so mentally prepared to fail because most people can't handle failure you got to start a business to fail because bigger the failure bigger the lessons bigger the lessons bigger the capabilities bigger the capabilities bigger the results so if you are young go out there and screw it up screw it up multiple times but let's just say you are at an age where culturally you have now a responsibility you have family you have kids your family depends on your income then this is not about attending a motivational seminar or watching a motivational video where a guy is saying entrepreneurship is the rat race follow your dreams become an entrepreneur and quitting your job overnight if you are in the middle of your life and you're b- looking at making a switch then be prepared with the reserves for at least a year to 18 months where your family's livelihood and lifestyle does not take a hit that's the kind of savings you need to have and start the journey by asking yourself what product or service can i create and offer on which people are willing to spend their money mm. and something which i can scale up mm. i run an investment company i can't even tell you the number of investment decks i receive for funding which make me laugh where people are creating fancy things and they expect millions 
in investment because they are giving into this fad of valuation and they think entrepreneurship is a powerpoint presentation <laughs> entrepreneurship is not a powerpoint presentation wow. it's about creating products and services that will add value to a specific audience who will be willing to spend money on that product or service so if you don't have a product or service that a specific target audience is not willing to spend their money then you're just wasting your time <laughs> <laughs> wow love that love that it's it's for people they really got to self evaluate and i i love the point that you make that it also depends on the stage of life you're in and yeah. you got to go and approach it accordingly uh, rajiv i know you're a big proponent of also uh, living a harmonious life uh, you really talk about the and life yeah uh, because most entrepreneurs i see or at least i'm from a marwadi community and all i see is they have a big fat belly and a lot of money uh, but hardly any sp- time with their family hardly any time with their health um, not for all but like a lot of the older generation that i see so what is your take on uh, entrepreneurs living a harmonious life so i'll tell you i un- somehow i don't know the media has done the media has mastered one thing the media has mastered glorifying stupidity okay. <laughs> uh let me let me elaborate on that because at the end of the day the media creates the narrative for every aspect of our life right ever watched a video where they say salman khan visited the wedding of his makeup artist son i'm like so <laughs> you better visit him otherwise he'll be an ungrateful human right and there'll be nothing being human about him but the media will run a clipping on that <laughs> in the same way when it comes to business career entrepreneurship uh, media has glorified uh living a life where oh if you are an entrepreneur your business is everything and if your business is not everything for you then there's something wrong with you you're not a true entrepreneur and uh, then they'll get quotes from these guys who've made money and they will say uh, for an entrepreneur business is everything in their life everything comes secondary and then you have the large masses who don't know how to interpret that because they're not seeing they're only seeing the statement of the guy they're not seeing his life okay they're not seeing that he has a health coach he has a fitness coach he's doing he's taking 10 vacations in a year uh, he's built a house where there are four people living in 21 stories okay <laughs> they're not seeing that that man has created wealth ha- that man has managed his health that man has or that woman has uh, lives a very ho- fulfilling life with their family they don't show that yeah okay and then you have the next generation of these startup guys who are like hum to 25 ghanta sirf coding karte hain khana nahi khate hain ye nahi karte wo nahi karte and they glorify stupidity okay <laughs> uh, and i don't come from that school of thought my school of thought is my business is a part of my life it is not my life mm. it's only a part of my life okay no matter how unglamorous and how uninspiring that sounds i'm telling you i have seen this i've had conversations with people the ones who understand this reality that your business is a part of your life and it's not your life live a way more holistic harmonious and fulfilling life okay wow for me you know when i read articles where when this guy is old he gets some lifetime achievement award and then he stands on stage and thanks his spouse for tolerating him for years and says that because you supported me i was always outside uh and today it's all worth it i'm sorry it's not worth it mm. if you were so clear that you only wanted to immerse all your time in your business and you just got married because you needed a maid to take care of your parents and then be a a production unit to take your lineage forward and then you thank her some day when you've lost your years uh, of togetherness and yes in that moment it may seem emotional but i feel all those years have been so unfulfilling and lonely for that person right so when i say such things to people the first response i get is oh rajiv but you can't have it all in life i said that's called championing being a loser huh? Think about it yeah when a person says you can't have it all in your life they've lost the battle even before the game started so true because they are telling themselves oh i i can't take care of my health spend quality time with my relationships 
recreate myself with things that i love doing and build a successful business and create massive wealth that's what they are saying that i can't do all of this wow i'm saying at least pursue it na at least pursue it hmm. pursue taking care of your health and your relationships and your recreation and your spiritual growth and your business growth and your financial growth and your business growth and your financial growth are different Hmm. your business generates your income how you save and invest that money creates your net worth most small and medium business owners don't understand this they say sab apna hi to hai and they have this habit of no financial discipline drawing money whenever they want putting money whenever the business needs it where is the personal asset creation where is the personal wealth creation where is the financial discipline for the business where is the recreation for yourself be it sports be it engaging in some hobby hobbies be it traveling and seeing and exploring this beautiful planet where is that quality time with your spouse where is that quality time with your children where is that quality time and creating memories with your parents wow. where is taking care of your own physical health where is taking care of your own mental and emotional health okay this having goals in all these areas and creating systems to make sure that you're creating progress in all these areas i'm not talking about perfection i'm not talking about 8 hours work 8 hours sleep 8 hours with family that never happens if you're in bangalore or mumbai 3 hours is in traffic itself so <laughs> i'm not talking about a 24 hour clockwork but in yeah. all honesty all areas of our life don't take that much time hmm an hour for exercise a couple of hours with your children and your spouse okay is good enough okay to nurture that relationship okay to really connect with your body in that one hour of workout and to really connect with those people in conversations at home or doing a walk together and talking i don't know what it is okay mm-hmm. but i believe that no time is a facade it's a lie that most people say and in fact for most people they don't even have clarity of what they want in different areas of their life and that's why the only thing they immerse themselves in is their professional life which is their business or their work wow so if we were to name it what are the main pillars you would say an entrepreneur should have in their life and focus on each equally so one is the business which is a part of your life and what are the other main pillars for me it's seven areas of your life it's okay. your health okay it's your relationships okay it's your business it's your finances and like i said business and finances are different it's your recreation it could be hobbies travel anything that gives you joy recreation means what what it's two words recreation that's what re- recreation is it's recreating yourself so what allows you to recreate yourself it could be just leisure and laying and watching tv that's also okay but recreation then contribution hmm how are you making use of yourself to support those okay who are in need in whatever form contributing your time money energy effort whatever and the seventh area is your own spiritual growth and for me spiritual growth is just about evolving as a person by learning every time you learn something new you evolve and every time you evolve you are moving to the next level of your growth as a spirit as a soul so spiritual growth these would be the seven areas wow i love that rajiv what are the biggest mistakes that you have seen other entrepreneurs make because you coach so many or some mistake that you have made as an entrepreneur in your younger times um, what are the main mistakes they make i think i'll start with my own mistakes um my biggest mistake that i made was i wanted to be the superhero at work every day i was the best sales guy the best customer manager the best accountant the best uh product creator the best solution provider the best team leader now i always say this to entrepreneurs if you are the best on your team you can never build a scalable business wow because wow. if you are the best on your team you will always be stuck in doing everything and when you're stuck in doing everything you're not thinking growth you're not thinking scale uh so i made that mistake for the first 8 years as an entrepreneur that's deep okay um second mistake was uh which i made was to be okay with not paying myself consistently mm. which is again a common mistake i see a lot of entrepreneurs make um you know i used to make sure i pay salaries on time i used to make sure i pay rent on time suppliers on time everybody used to get paid on time except me and uh, this again comes from the school of thought created by the media the larger narrative of uh, entrepreneurship is about sacrifice yeah. 
It's not about thinking about yourself. It's about surrendering to your vision. Nobody knows what the hell is their vision. And they watch this shit and they think that's the reality of life. Okay. I'm telling you, people really lack perspective. I lack that perspective. In fact, people feel like a very good human being when they are broke. (laughs) A lot of entrepreneurs feel that. They, it's called enjoying the joy of suffering. You know, there's a <laughs> Hindi mein they say dard mein nasha hai, dard mein hai. Hai. <laughs> yeah. They enjoy the joy of suffering. So, you know, you typically go to any club in the evening and you go there and you sit and you see a group of men or entrepreneurs sitting there. You get the next table. You are entertained for the evening because after <laughs> two drinks, one guy will say, pata hai, and the guy on the other side, his ego gets hurt. He said, only two months, six months, one rupiah nahi leke gaya ghar ko. People feel proud of stupidity. <laughs> they feel like, wow, I'm a visionary. I'm investing in my vision. And then when you say such things, then they'll say, but Rajiv, Steve Jobs started from a garage. I'm like, you idiot. He started from a garage. He didn't spend the rest of his life in a garage. He grew his business. You're in the garage for the last five years. Look at what you're doing wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> so people, I'm telling you somewhere, there's virtue in poverty. Mm. And people enjoy that virtuousness. They feel, oh, if this person is making money, pakka kuch gadbad hai, kala hai, ye kar- they have all those notions and then when it comes to them they say I am broke because I am a good human being uh, so I'm true like, dude being a good human being versus being a capable entrepreneur you can be both you can be a good human being and a capable entrepreneur Yeah. and the reflection of your capability is your results a batsman in cricket is as good as the runs he scores in the same way A striker in football is as good as the goals he scores. An entrepreneur is as good as the money they make. And the reason for me to say that is not because I come from a school of thought that money is everything. I just come from the school of thought is that the money is a reflection of our capabilities. If we are capable, we will build the right strategies, the right systems, the right skills in our team, the right products or services. So the key is to understand that. Wow. Rajiv, so going from the mistakes that people are making in business and entrepreneurship to what is most required to work upon uh, in a business for anybody who's doing their business? See, the first aspect is the business model. Okay. What do we mean by business model? It's the product or service that you're offering and the target customer you're offering to and the method in which you're offering that product or service. Hmm. These three elements have to be taken care of. Are you offering a product or service which solves a significant problem or fulfills a significant need for a specific target customer? Because you can't say everybody is my customer. Who is the right customer? What do I mean by right customer? Someone who has the money and the need for your product or service. So when you take the product or service which solves a problem or fulfills a need and you offer it to the right person who has the money and the need for it, And you have the right channel to reach those customers, to deliver those products or services. Got the right foundation formula. Mm. For most entrepreneurs, that foundation formula is missing. Mm. We have a great product, but they're offering it to the wrong customer. Or they they know who's the right customer. They know what is the right product or service, but they don't have the right channel or method to reach out to enough number of people. So that's the foundation. Once you get the right business model in place, the next aspect for a business owner to focus on is to create systems and teams. Why is it important to create systems and teams? See, the difference between successful business owners and mediocre business owners is this. Successful business owners spend their time on strategy, system, and team. Mediocre business owners spend their time on taking care of the customer personally. Mm. Now, a person who's taking care of the customer personally can only grow to a certain level because they can't handle beyond that capacity. Exactly. But a person who focuses on constantly evolving and building strategies, systems, and teams, then that person is building a machinery that can handle a volume of customers. So the, the challenge I see with most entrepreneurs is this. 
they start the business with a lot of enthusiasm with a lot of hope with a lot of optimism you know in our culture the milestone of success is karodpati hmm. 1 crore personal income which means 8 lakh 67000 rupees per month personal income after taxes so everybody starts a business saying okay i want to build a successful business i want to be a karodpati and within 4 months of building their business and running their business that 8 lakh 67000 rupees they say oh per month this is not practical even if i make 80000 rupees a month it is enough <laughs> and to make that 80000 rupees a month they sit and take care of the customer personally exactly now i say that you are using you are taking a more difficult path to make that 80000 or that 1 lakh or 1.5 lakhs you know what would be an easier path to make that 80000 1 lakh or 1.5 lakhs a month is to go get a job <laughs> and for the skill knowledge business acumen capabilities of a business owner if they apply for a job anybody will pay them a six figure salary comfortably correct and i'm not demeaning jobs here all i'm saying is it's a game of clarity if a person wants a stable income then jobs is the best vehicle hmm. if you are saying rajiv all i need is 1 1 and a half lakh rupees a month to run my family or 2 2 lakh rupees a month to run a good home go get a job right why put your family through so much stress why put yourself through so much stress where you're doing a business deploying capital risking your money bus working harder than normal no peace of mind carrying work to home why are you doing that take an easier path wow okay? jobs are a vehicle for income generation business is a vehicle for wealth creation and i'm not saying that you cannot create wealth if you're in a job when you are in a job the way you manage your savings and your investments you can still create wealth but the trajectory of growth in a job is not as rapid as in a business right. from an 80000 you'll get an appraisal of 10 15% you'll move to 95 from 95 you'll move to 110 from 110 you'll move to 120 from 120 you'll move to 150 it's a trajectory which is slower and you can still create wealth in a job also but in a business you have the opportunity of fast tracking wealth creation by building something of scale and if something is not of scale and everything is done by you then that's not business that's called self employment and that comes in between see job is for stability business is for wealth creation self employment is for ego wow because it makes you feel like you are a business owner it makes you feel like in your business card it says founder or ceo but in reality it's not just now but even with your existing actions and your existing approach if it continues the way it does even 3 years down the line you'll be at the same situation and self employment is a trap wow. most people are in that trap they don't see it as a trap they see it as a way of life not But, paying themselves doing everything by themselves they see that as the way of life i love it it reminds me of this one line i read in michael gerber's book e myth revisited and he says work on the business not in it <laughs> you know uh, so most people are in it and they forget working on the business yeah i'll tell you even in this analogy of working on the business and in it when you start you have to work in the business correct but the approach and the outlook always has to be how can i stop doing this how can i develop somebody mm-hmm. the approach and outlook has to be how can we build systems so that this is not people development uh, people dependent that approach is missing exactly. see when an entrepreneur says something like i don't want to hire people because my expenses will grow my first judgment of such an entrepreneur is this person does not understand building a business you don't build wealth by thinking how to save money you th- you build wealth by thinking how i can multiply money hmm. when you want to multiply money building teams is the best way of multiplying money and that money that you are giving don't give it with the heart of oh mera kharcha ja raha hai give it with the heart of i am rewarding this person for their contribution see it really i am telling you few behaviors and thought processes tell you whether this person's designed for scale or whether this person's designed for struggle <laughs> simple questions i ask entrepreneurs would you like to pay more to your team members or less and most entrepreneurs says or oh, if i can pay less it'll be better now think about it most entrepreneurs are going to work every day thinking how much more lesser i can pay my team members and how much more work can i get done from them 
Now, you know what happens with such entrepreneurs? They find team members who are thinking, how much less work can I do and what maximum pay I can get from the company? Then I say, Khelo Dandia ek dusre ke saath abhi. But entrepreneurs who are always looking at how can I pay my team members more? How can I grow their career more? How can I grow them financially more? They create an environment where they find people who come to contribute because even they understand if the company grows, then I can grow. Wow. What a great mindset to have. Um, Rajiv, you're somebody uh, who in some businesses, you have partners yeah. part business, and you're great friends with them. And you're also partners with your wife in a business or so. But nowadays I'm hearing this rhetoric where people are saying that, you know, it's best to avoid partnership business and partnership business is risky. We see so many family businesses going down the drains just because of conflict in partnership. So what is your view on uh, business partnership in the 21st century? And why do family businesses go down the drain because of conflict? So here's my view. Um, when it comes to business partnerships, and I'll come to family business as well. Firstly, when it comes to business partnerships, the mistake I see people make is that they make their friends or their colleagues or their relatives business partners hmm. without evaluating that as partners, do we have complementary skills? What do I mean by that? If I am good at the product side, is this person good at marketing and sales? Because even if this person is go also good at product side, then what happens is this. Firstly, marketing and sales gets ignored in the business and we don't make money. Secondly, it becomes a subconscious competition about whose approach is better with the product. The formula for a successful partnership is complementary skills. Your skills need to be different. Your networks need to be different. Your capabilities need to be different, but common vision and values. Wow. What an amazing thought. Hmm. Now, what do I mean by common vision and values? See, there are some people who are happy with, yeah, if we grow the business to a point where we make one, one and a half, like two lakh rupees a month for ourselves, I think I'm happy with that. And then there are some who are like, no, I want to build a brand. I want to scale it up. I want to take it. So if the vision is different, then it's like, it's like you have a chariot and there are two horses, but both the horses have been told a different address. Now you say one, two, three, go. One horse is going right. Other horse is going left. Chariot is going up and crashing down. <laughs> right. You need to have the common end address. That's a common vision. Second is the value system. The, the basics. What is acceptable to us? What is not acceptable to us? As people, that has to be common. Two thieves make a great partnership. Wow. One thief and one Gandhian will not make a great partnership. Okay. So you want to understand this complementary skills, common values and common vision is the real ingredient of a great partnership. Now, why are family businesses collapsing? Let's come to that. Okay. I look at two kinds of family businesses. One kind of family business is where you're working as a couple. Even that's a family business. I, in one of my companies, my wife is my business partner and both of us work. But even though we are working as a couple, we have complementary skills. We have a common vision and we have a common value system. And of course, we've had to work with each other on how we want to be as business partners and how we want to be as a couple. So how we communicate with each other is important. Like one of the things when we are talking is we just ask who's speaking right now, business partner or life partner. Because I'll tell you, it's easy to get carried away where something's not done by one person in the business, but the comment comes like a husband or a wife. You don't do this at home also. That's yeah, it. Uh, that's, so that's, that's like beginning a WWE match now. Now you do wrestling. You do rock bottom, she gives you choke slam. Okay. Yeah. So you got to be clear. And this is something you have to create. And for that, I think the foundation is is the strength of your personal relationship. Okay, that's very important. See, couples who are like, oh, my husband is going out, I am free. Or my wife is going out, I am free. I think if that's the approach where you genuinely don't love being with each other, then your business journey with each other is only going to amplify the hell. Mm. Right? So... I think as couples, you got to work. And do me and my wife fight? Yes, we do fight. Of course, we fight. We are normal. Okay. But 
through the process we have our mechanism to realign to to kind of be flexible with each other to understand each other and evolve in our relationship and evolution does not mean re- reduction in expression in a lot of relationships i see after years because of the judgments they have about each other their expression goes down expression going down in a relationship is the killer of the relationship and that's when then you have children who look at their parents who are not communicating and they'll say what's the point of getting married i don't want to live like brother sister after 40 they <laughs> don't know the bhai ban jaise rehte hain no chemistry no connection no connection. <laughs> right. so it's not the problem with the next generation is the problem with the previous one that makes the next generation think a certain way right uh, uh... Now that comes to family business, a uh, couple businesses. Now, when it comes to family business, where there are generations involved, or there's a joint family involved, yeah. okay, in such an environment, one of the things that I keep educating family businesses is that don't make people in the family a part of the business because they are family. Make people from the family a part of the business because they have certain skills in the business. and if they don't one of the biggest injustices parents have done to our generation i'm in my 30s so i'm talking about my dad's generation one of the biggest injustices my dad's generation has done is they struggled they built ventures by themselves but when their children were big enough they directly made them director and vice president they didn't let their children go through the struggle and i know that comes out of love ki apna hi to hai but no apna hai to usko niche se upar lao wow baju mein ac ka cabin de doge na kuch kaam ka nahi rahega okay <laughs> then you have a bloody organic fruit lab grown it needs air conditioning all the time okay <laughs> keep it in the open air and he'll rot okay so the key is in a family business two things one induce the next generation from ground level roles across departments first the first 3 to 4 years let them work in different departments in ground level roles 3 months 6 months in each department let them understand the grassroots of the business let them earn the respect of everybody on the team because think about it for your old employees your child was a child they used to play with on diwali puja and now suddenly this child is no longer a child and he hit puberty and you made him vice president now this was like you know ye bachcha hi to hai right i've seen him grow up but let them earn their respect ground level grassroots understanding and then empower them that's fine the second rule in family businesses is this a lot of people say we are making our family a part of the business let's like get relatives cousins everybody in the business saying because we trust them ye khud ki family hai ye dhoka nahi denge ye we trust them and i'll tell you then they regret hiring such people because please understand the only reason you hired them is you trust them but is trust the only capability required to be effective on that job role no so this person is not having the skills and knowledge for that job role but you just trust them this person is becoming a watchman for you for their other employees the employees have more capabilities than this person and obviously this person does not have the capability so the employees are also getting frustrated saying because he is this fellow's cousin or that fellow's sister's husband that's why he is here what a useless fellow even you are going to lose talent in your organization mm. just trust is not good enough and this mentality i come from a sindhi community i'm telling you especially in the north indian community this is a big problem we make son in laws who are unemployed and good for nothing managers in companies right and that son in law will have the ego of the world because pehle usko manwar chahiye fir usko salary chahiye right and i'm telling you such companies are bound to collapse and i don't feel bad for them <laughs> because you That's are the decision yeah yeah you are not making the right decisions wow so i think it's about having people because they fit the role not having people because we trust them wow i love how you always keep it real <laughs> raji i've got, I've, i've got a couple more questions for you yeah what is the number one skill an entrepreneur needs a rest can be made but this skill mm, it's a must for a start 
learning mm. because if you have the skill of learning and learning is a skill and not everybody has it but if you have the skill of learning you can learn any skill wow so i keep it that simple that's amazing rajiv i i'm feeling like i want to do a whole another podcast with you on relationships because i know you're a master at relationships and this is something that you don't publicly say but i know secretly that um you are a great relationship coach as well and you've uh, you have your own system and mastery over this topic uh, i'm just too intrigued because the way you talk about family business um and relationships you really understand these dynamics and i think it's really challenging to be uh, business partners with your best friends and your wife and run and build such a successful business it's it's uh, more challenging than most people think for me i think relationships are actually my true priority in my life hmm um people ask me what's your mission firstly i don't have one and it sounds so wrong as a business coach to not have a mission statement <laughs> where you say i want to impact 1 lakh people i'm like i don't give a fuck about impacting 1 lakh people <laughs> for me my i'm very real with myself about why i do what i do and for me it's very clear i do what i do first for my family okay no matter how wrong that sounds on a public platform but that's my reality it's my truth i can't hide it i i wake up in the morning and i go to work and i want to create that abundance so that my family lives an abundant life okay so for me the source of everything is family and i truly believe that as indians we are blessed with this system and this culture called family which is getting degenerated not because of western influence but because most families are fake environments that are driven on the principle of control rather than care where there's a alpha in the family and that person wants to control and correct everybody control loses connection wow wow i genuinely believe a great family is a family where there is conversation there's genuine care and each person's goals are valued most in most families especially where there is a housewife firstly i don't agree to the concept of a housewife it was required in my grandmother's time because she had 16 children okay it's not required today with two three children okay so in most families where still there's the housewife culture I don't know if people have sat down with that lady of the house and sat down and asked her what's your goal. And I'll tell you, those women are so selfless that they'll say, "Hamko kya? Hamko to ghar wale sab khush rehne chahiye." But where is the her? Where is that that individual, right? And for me, I always say this to people: me being a business coach is only my way of seducing people with this idea of I can help you make more money in your business so that they come in. and they get grounded to these fundamentals of taking care of their health wealth relationships and really nurturing and creating a family which is wholesome wow i say ye coaching ye business growth ye sab to bahana hai tumko andar lane ke liye once you come into our system it's about really setting the foundation of your life in place because then you're doing what you're doing with clarity of why do i need to do it so that's what excites me i'm not a business coach because i love business i'm a business coach because i believe when a business grows you have happier families both for the owner and for the employees wow so family is the foundation it's a core value for me that's deep rajiv always keeping it real i love it folks you got to follow rajiv on instagram cuz uh, you will get to see here all the kinds of conversations that we are having right now Rajiv thank you so much uh, for an hour of your time this was solid we probably do need an episode 2 down in the future with you there's so many conversations to be had anything that you would like to say at the end i just want to say i think we should stop taking life seriously i think that's the key um hmm. uh, when you become an observer of your own game and not be the player in your own game and you you kind of you know in movies they show a soul leaving a body okay <laughs> every day if you get your soul to leave your body and just observe what your body is doing observe your actions observe your thoughts observe your conversations and laugh at it and then just get clarity by asking yourself is this what i really want we're able to have fun and create that clarity and focus on what we want 
I think we're all sorted. We're all sorted in our own imperfect ways. Love it. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv, for being on the show. This was an awesome conversation. Thank you, Naren. It was my pleasure. Hello and welcome again. I hope you really enjoyed this podcast. If you did, share it with one person that you can help. Just go. It's say madat mile. And if you like this podcast, you want such more insightful information and knowledge, check out the other podcasts right here. I will see you very soon in another episode.